Hello and welcome to another Excel Tips video. I'm Sumit Bansal and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create all possible combinations when you have two or more lists. For example, if you have a list of coffee types and different type of milks, then you can quickly create all the possible combinations for each coffee type with each type of milk. Now this can be done with Power Query and you can also do this with an Excel formula. So I'm going to show you both of these methods. So let's get started. Here I have this data set where I have five different coffee types, then I have five different milk types, and then I have three different sizes. Now I want to create all the combinations that I can, all the possible combinations with this data. So for example, in this case, if I talk about cappuccino, then I can have five combinations. Uh, one would be cappuccino with regular milk, and then oat milk, almond, soy, and skim milk. And for each of these combinations, for example, cappuccino in regular milk, I would have combination of small, medium, and large. So this is going to be one combination. Then if I talk about cappuccino and oat milk, then again, I would have three sizes, small, medium, and large. So if I talk about all of these combinations, then in total, I would have 75 combinations because I have five here, then I have five here, and then I have three here. So five into five into three is 75. Now I can do this manually in this case because this is a small data set, but if you have something which is a little larger than this, then you will not be able to do this manually. So let me show you how to do this using Power Query, which I think is the easiest way to do this. Now to use Power Query, I'm going to first convert all of these three tables into an Excel table and then use that in Power Query. So to do that, I'm going to select this or select any cell in this table. Hold the control key, press the T key. This is the keyboard shortcut to create a table. And then here, make sure my table has headers is checked and now click OK. So when you do that, it converts this into an Excel table where this is the header and these are the cells in the table. Similarly, I'm going to do it for milk. But before that, I would also give this table a name. So in this case, let me call this table as coffee. Then I would do the same thing with milk. So control T enter to convert it into a table and I would call this table as milk and then here I would again do the same thing control T and let's call this sizes. So now all of all of these tables have been converted into an Excel table. Let me also change the header color so at least you can see the table header. Now I'm going to open each of these in Power Query and save it as a connection. And I'm doing this because then I can use that connection further to combine all of these into a separate query. So to do that, I'm going to go to the data tab. And here I have this option within get and transform. There is this option called from table range because this is an, a table already. I can click on this. And when I click on this, it is going to open Power Query editor. You can also do the same thing by going to this option, get data, then from other sources. And here again, you have the same option from table range. So when I click on it, it opens Power Query and you can see the coffee table is now visible in the Power Query editor. Now, I do not want to do any transformation, anything with this. All I want to do is come here to close and load, click on close and load to, and I want to uh, save it as a connection. So I would choose only create connection and click OK. So now when I do that, you can see in this pane queries and connection pane that opens up, it has coffee and it says connection only. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other two tables. So go to the data tab here, click on from table range. It opens this table, which is called milk in power query. I'm going to go to close and load two and only create connection and then do the same thing with this table. Close and load two and only create a connection. Now I have these three connections created. Now I'm going to open Power Query and then create another query that is going to combine all of them. So to do that, I'm going to open a blank Power Query and I can do that by using the keyboard shortcut Alt F12. So I will hold the Alt key, press the F12 key. It opens Power Query editor here. And here on the left, I have this query navigation pane and I can just right click, go to new query and then in other sources, I have this option blank query. And when I do that, it opens this blank query. Let's call this query combinations. And now, as of now, the query has nothing. But what I want to do is first refer to any one of these tables. So let's refer to the table coffee. So all the data in the coffee table is going to come here in the combinations query. So let's call this coffee. And while I'm typing, you'll see that this table appears. So let's just put the name here and hit enter. When I do that, I have all the records for coffee. Now, what I'm going to do is I need one record for cappuccino 
and I want it to repeat for as many milk types as there are. So for example, if there are five milk types, I want cappuccino record to repeat five times. And then in front, in the other column, it, it should list all the different milk types. So to do that, what I'm going to do is click on add column and then here click on uh, custom column. And in the custom column dialog box that opens here, I need to specify the custom column formula. But in this case, what I just need is a simple table. So I just would put the name of the table I want here, which is milk. And now when I click OK, it inserts a column and then there is a table. But what it has done is in each cell, there is this entire milk table. So all the five records for milk are here in this cell. Then again, if you click on this one, you'll see in the preview, I have all these five records. So here, what if I want to just now combine them? You can easily do that by coming here then clicking on this one, then make sure that you uncheck use original column names as prefix because it just it just adds the prefix in the column name. So I don't want that. And now when I click OK, you can see it has created the combination. So I have five records for cappuccino for five different milk type. And now I have five different records for latte, then again, five different milk type and so on. So it has already created a combination of the first two tables. Now I want to do the same thing for the third table. So again, I would do the same thing here. Uh, go to custom column here, type sizes choose this uh, table, click OK. It inserts uh, a column that has a table, but I want to expand this table. So I would click here and then click OK. And when I do that, now it gives me a total of 75 records. You, you can see in the status bar, it says 75 records. And this is exactly what I wanted. So I have these records, I think 15 records for cappuccino, where there are five milk types and three different sizes. So it has done the combination for me. Now I can reload this back into Excel. So I would come to the home tab here, click on close and load to and let me load it into the same Excel worksheet. So I would click on this option here. And let's choose this option G1. And now when I click OK, it is going to load this data. And you can see I have this exact data I wanted. This is a table that has the combination of all of these three tables. Now I have done this for these three. But if you want to do it for more records or more tables, you can easily just follow the same step. It's just that if you have more tables, then you would have to create more queries and then have more steps. But once it's done, it's actually very manageable. If you come here and you change this, for example, after large, let's say I have another size size called grande then I have uh, the table updated I can just come here click on refresh the query and this should automatically update so you can see now for every of these coffee type and milk type I have this new record here so I should have more records now you can see there are 100 records in this case so it's easy to refresh and easy to manage and this is probably the easiest way to create these combinations now let me also show you an excel formula to do this so here again, I have this data set where I have these coffee types, milk types and the sizes, and I want to create combinations of all of them. In total, I would have 75 records. Now, in this case, uh, because I want to use a formula, what I would try is I want to combine this with these in such a way that I would get all the combinations. See what happens when I use this here, so A2 to A6, then I use an ampersand and I try and combine it with this here, which is C2 to C6. And let's do one thing. Let's also put a delimiter in between something like uh, a pipe symbol so that we know what separates these two and you can put any delimiter that you want. Now if I hit enter here, I need to put an ampersand here. Now if I hit enter, it gives me this. But what it's giving me is cappuccino with regular milk. So in this case, it is giving me a combination of this and this and this, but it is not giving me a combination of this as well as this, as well as this. So it's only giving me the combination of the rows, but not of the column. And the reason for this is because this combines the rows, but it doesn't combine the column that way. But if I convert this into a row instead of a column, then that works. So in this case, I would come here and instead of using C2 to C6, I would use transpose C2 to C6. See what happens now when I hit enter, it works, although it gives me the result in an array which has rows as well as columns. So in this case, you'll see it gives me cappuccino, regular milk, cappuccino, oat milk, almond milk and so on. So I have all the combinations in a row. And then for latte, again, I have all the combinations in a row. Now, this is an easy problem because I can solve this by getting everything in a column. So I would come here and I could I would just wrap this within to call function so that it gives me everything in one single column. So when I hit enter, it works. It gives me this result here. Now again, I can follow the same process. So I have a combination that, that gives me a table like this. Now I want to combine this table with the sizes as well. So I'm going to combine it 
with transpose because these are in a column and I want them to be in a row. It's not translate, transpose. And here I would select this. And let me also put a delimiter here. So I would put pipe symbol and then an ampersand here. So now when I hit enter, again, it gives me three records, one for each size. So cappuccino regular, small cappuccino regular, uh, medium cappuccino regular large and again same thing for all these so again I can come here and I can convert this into one single column by using to call in this formula and this works so now it has given me all these results the only thing is that this gives me the result in one single cell and I want them to be split in three different cell and this is why we actually put the delimiter there because now we are going to use the delimiter to split it so I can come here and I can use this function text split this is my text here and my column delimiter is a pipe symbol and that's it. I hit enter. It gives me this record where all of these are split into three different cells in the row and I can copy it down. So I can copy this down and this works. Also, if you convert these into an Excel table, then it would also become dynamic because this formula is dependent on these tables. So if you convert this into an Excel table, then if your types of coffee increases or milk increases, then you will be able to see that the records, the result automatically expands and gives you the right result. Now, one thing that there is that was bugging me a lot is that in this case, I had to make sure that I copy these results down. For example, if I just remove this, and I just have this result, so it works uh, It works fine. But if I convert this into a complete array, so if I want this to take this entire array here, and then if I hit enter, I want it to give me the result in such a way that it has three columns and all the rows are filled. That is the general dynamic array uh, result that I usually expect. But this doesn't work with text split. With text split, either you can have the result in separate columns, so text split result here or you can get the result here but if you have something where the result is spilling then it is not going to give you the result in different columns and this is a problem with text split so this is a problem that I am going to solve in my next video I will show you how to get around this but if you want to use this formula in this case then you will have to make sure that you just use a8 here so the cell reference of this cell then use text split to get the result in three separate columns and then you drag this down and this is going to work fine. So these are two methods that you can use to quickly create combinations. As I said, the formula method is also fine, but if you really want to make it manageable and do it quickly, then Power Query method is probably the better way to do this. That's it in this video. I hope you found this useful. Also, if you're liking these videos, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and click on the bell icon so that you never miss out on any new Excel tips video I come up with. Thank you and have a nice day.